purpose. Uh, in the video earlier, which is not my video, by the way, uh, I did not put it up uh, for us to watch today, it says, you know, find out your purpose. Well, this morning, I'm standing here to tell you what that purpose is. Because it's not something that we try to pursue blindly and say, oh man, I'm now 20 years old, I don't know what God wants for my life. I'm now 30, I'm now 40, I'm 50, 60, 70, 80. Any more than that? Okay. 85! I wonder what's God's purpose for my life. If that is your attitude as a Christian, you are walking your Christian life blindly. Let's go to Mr. Webster. What is purpose? Purpose is really very simple. According to Mr. Webster, or Miriam Webster, I believe, or Google, purpose is the reason for which something is done. Okay, let's start with that. It's the reason for why something is done. It is also the reason for which something is created. Okay? That's purpose. Purpose is also the reason for which something exists. Why are you breathing? Why are you still alive? If you're a Christian and whose sin has been paid for, and that you're assured of your salvation, why are you here? What's your purpose? And sometimes you say, oh man, what's my purpose? Am I going to be a doctor? Uh, am I going to be a lawyer? Well, those are all nice things to think about. But scripture is very clear as to what purpose is all about. So, let's begin. Let's give an illustration. And since we've been talking already about Pacquiao, and so here's Pacquiao. How many of you watched the fight last night? Ho, ho. So don't get knocked out this morning, okay? <laughs> Watch those who raise their hands, okay? Make sure they don't get knocked out. When these two came, these two great fighters came and decided to have a fight, they did not say, okay, let's just kind of play around, okay? When they went up the ring, they were not just saying, okay, it's just for the photo shoot so that people can take pictures. That was not the purpose. The purpose when they came up the ring was to knock each other down. No boxer, good boxer for that matter, would come up the ring and say, okay, let's just come and take a picture. We have so much fun. Fans. Fans. How do you pronounce that? F-A-N-S. Fans. Okay. Not, not fans? No? Okay. Fans. They should take a picture. No, they went there to knock each other out. That is called purpose, at least as far as the Bible is concerned. You know what's, what's very interesting? That Paul actually uses boxing as, il as an illustration for a purpose. Did you know that? Okay, take this now. By the way, must everyone, your bulletins, you don't have anything in it, get your pens. If you don't have, you'll be writing a lot of things. So, Purpose. What and how did Paul use the word purpose? 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 26, part B. He says this, of games in general, not just boxing, but he begins with running. He says, I do not run like someone running, what? If you are a runner, and you, this is a starting point, and that's the end point, you don't just run for the sake of running, right? You run to the finish line. I don't run aimlessly. Then, it seems like there were not too much uh, people whom he was writing to were runners. He said, maybe some of you are boxers. So he said this, I do not fight like a boxer beating the air. I box to hit my opponent. That is my purpose. Now, obviously, he was not talking about games. He was talking about Christian living. It's so sad that there are lots of Christians, that's why he wrote this, are living their Christian life and they are... What's your purpose? No purpose. Oh, my purpose is to go to church. 
That's not the purpose. Oh, my purpose is to read the Bible. No, 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 no. Those are tools for a purpose, which we will understand and hopefully, uh, you know, get to apply it in our lives. So, I would like to speak about two things, basically. Two persons in particular, the purpose of Christ and the purpose of Paul. As far as Christ is concerned, it's dual purpose. He came, and which we celebrate every year, Christmas. He came. What's the purpose? For exchange gift. No, 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 no. That's not the purpose. Oh, he came so that I can decorate my house with lights. That's not the purpose. Oh, he came so that every year we'll have a Christmas drama. No, that was not the reason why Jesus came. He came for, number one, to make the way to save the world from sin and death. He did not come here for photo shoot. He did not come to this world to tour Jerusalem. He did not come here to meet the twelve. He did not come here to uh, just, you know, have an, a, a pulpit to preach. He did not just come here to heal the blind. That was not his main purpose. His main purpose, number one, is to make the way, where he said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life, not a way, the way to save the world from sin and death. Luke makes it clear. In the book of Luke, he says this. Chapter 19, the shortest Christmas verse. Okay? For the Son of Man, speaking of Jesus, came, okay, that's Christmas. Merry Christmas. He came for what? Okay, that's very important. Christmas, he came for what? What's his purpose? Why he came? Why? To seek and save the lost. That is a very specific purpose. He didn't just come here for the sake of coming to this world. He didn't just come here to have a Lord's Supper. He didn't just come here to baptize. He came to seek and save the lost. See, sink it in. in. Okay? It reminds me of thought. That's the reason for Christmas. That's the reason why he came. Another verse, Mike. Give me another verse. Here it is. 2 Peter 3, 9. Context. The context of 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9, or the 2 Peter in particular, was speaking about the second coming. And there were Christians who were kind of tired of waiting. And so they kept asking the question, when is he coming back? He told us a couple of decades ago that he is coming back. When is he coming back? And Peter took up that question. And by the way, I had a question today for the, to, to answer. Uh, who, uh, whoever sent this uh, paper question. We don't have a time right now. Maybe we'll do it next week, okay? So, but it's a good question. So there was a congregation, and they had a question. Their question was, when is Jesus coming? Why is he so slow? He promised it. It's been, what, six decades, seven decades now? He's not back yet. He's so slow. The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise, says Peter. Okay? Instead, instead, what's the word instead? On the other hand, on the other hand, he is not slow. But I'll tell you why he is not coming back yet. Because he is patient with you. You see, the reason why he's not coming back yet is not because he's delaying it. The reason why he is delaying it because you're delayed. Yeah. You know, not, not like an airline. If you're late, you're left behind. Now, here's a pilot who say, oh, man, passenger number 51D. Uh, you know. Uh, not yet ready. Not yet ready. Uh, and the passenger, what, 33A. Still not here. So the pilot says to the passengers, five more minutes, five more minutes. See that? Jesus is saying, or Peter is saying, and telling the people that Jesus is not coming back yet, not because he's slow. He's in the cockpit already. He's ready to fly. But he's patient with you. Why? Why is he patient with you? Why? Because he does not want anyone to perish. If you get left behind, you're left behind and you're gone. 
He was talking to the church. You know why he was talking to the church this way? Because there were people in the church, in that congregation, who were not boarded yet. Was not boarded yet. In other words, they're not saved yet. So we're waiting for you. Not wanting anyone to perish. But, <laughs> okay, but, that's a beautiful word. But, this is what he wants. He wants everyone to come to repentance. That's why he's not coming back yet. Yeah, sometimes, I, I know all of us, you know, especially those of us who have big problems. Lord, Maranatha, come back now. Right? <laughs> to those of us who have arthritis and those of us uh, you know, all these kinds of problems, Lord, come back now. But the Lord is saying, oh, hold on. Keep your arthritis for now, okay? <laughs> there are still some people who need to come back, who need to board. I, because the Lord is wanting everyone. Everyone means all. That's why he seems slow. Seems slow, but he's not slow. First purpose of Christ. First purpose. Main purpose. To make the way. Second purpose. Dual. What's the second purpose? Are you ready? Which is the second purpose? He came to make and train disciples that makes disciples. I repeat. He came to make and train disciples that makes disciples. He did not come to make disciples, period. He did not come for the twelve. For God so loved the twelve that he gave himself to the twelve. That whoever among the twelve will believe will have eternal life. Is that what John 16 says? He loves the world. All, everyone. That's why he came here and stayed for three years. If he simply came to die for the sins of the world, he could have arrived today and died tomorrow, the end. It is finished. And he was still a baby. It is finished. But he stayed here for 33 years. Remember? Where do we see that? Mike, 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 Mike. Where do we see that Jesus is saying that he came to make disciples? That makes disciples. Huh? You're right. Matthew. We all know this. The Great Commission. Who doesn't know the Great Commission? You know what? If you don't know it, probably you're still lost. Maybe you're the one who's not boarded yet. Because frankly, this lesson is more for those who are already on board. Okay? He says this, yeah, I won't read anything. It's just the main thing. Therefore, go and make disciples. Question! To whom did he say, go and make disciples? To his disciples! You see? He came to make and train disciples that makes disciples. So you think you're a disciple because you attend the disciple one on one, one or two or three. You're not a disciple yet. A disciple is one who multiplies himself. Mm. Oh, I, I, I took up the way of the master. Well, if you haven't done anything about it, that's called cognitive learning. Head knowledge. That is not the purpose. That is only a tool for us to do what he wants, to make other disciples. And if I may add, make disciples that make disciples, that makes disciples, that makes disciples, and that makes disciples. Is it clear so far? Now, another one that I know many of you already know is 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, 17 to 20. 17, 18, 19, 20. Four verses. But many of us love the first verse. 17, oh, I love it. I've memorized it. What is that verse? If anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Hallelujah. I'm a new creation. But we forget the rest of the verse. Verse 18, by the way, I'm summarizing it. Okay? The next verse 18 says, 
you are given the ministry of reconciliation. Those who are new creation are given the ministry of reconciliation. The next verse. Those who are new creation who have been given the ministry of reconciliation have been committed with the message of reconciliation. That's 19. 20. Those who are new creation who have been given the ministry of reconciliation and committed with the message of reconciliation are called ambassadors of Christ. They are representative of Christ. What does it mean? You are a disciple who makes a disciple who makes a disciple. Now, what are the key words? I already highlighted them, but just to make clear, oftentimes we connect new creation as, ah, I'm now going to heaven. I'm a new creation. Ah, I'm now a child of God. I'm a new creation. I'm now forgiven. I'm a new creation. Those are all true. But remember, context is crucial. What is the context when Paul said you are a new creation? What is the new? Yeah, your job is new. Before you came to know the Lord, before you came to know, the, to know Christ, you are a freelancer. Do whatever you want. Pursue whatever you want. But since you are in Christ, I've given you the work. That is what is new in the context. Yes, you're a child of God now. Yes, you're forgiven. Yes, you're going to heaven. Yes, you are a friend of God. Those are all great, but not in the context. The context of the new creation is that now you are a new worker in the kingdom of God. Does that make sense now? Yeah. And that he committed to us. The message. Your work is this. Committed. So you don't just work for the sake of working. There's a purpose. Oh, I'm called to be a doctor. Yeah, why? So that all my patients, I can share the gospel. By the way, just on the side, do you know why doctors, when they're about to go to a surgery, okay, the, 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 the patient is uh, you know, on the table, and then he comes in you know, with his glove, and then he approaches the person, to the patient, ah, how are you doing today? Do you know why his hands are this way? Huh? No one? No. Do you know why? Because the patient will be fearful if the doctor comes and says, how are you today? <laughs> oh, by the way, that's not the lesson, okay? I'm just... I'm just okay. So, any of you doctors? Where's the Dr. Clay? He's not here? Ask Dr. Clay. He has always done this, okay? He will never do this, right? Okay, so, where am I? Let's get back, let's get back. Okay, let's get back. So, the new creation is the new work. Your new job description as Christians... You are now a minister. And the word minister is job. The ministry of highway. That's the job of the highways. Ministry of health. That's the job about health care. Okay? Ministry. And you are committed specifically the message of reconciliation, which is the gospel. Therefore, you are representative ambassadors of Christ. All of this sum up into one word. Huh? Purpose! <laughs> that is the summary of everything. The Lord is saying, this is your purpose. If anyone is in Christ, this is your purpose. You don't have to try to find out. I wonder, let me toss a coin. Ah. <laughs> if it's heads, I win. If it's tails, you lose. <laughs> purpose! So, brothers and sisters, I know we talk a lot about purpose. You know, we have purpose to worship, we have purpose to fellowship, purpose to do this and do that. But those are... I would say sub-purpose. If anyone is in Christ, here's your purpose. Message of reconciliation. Evangelism class is not exclusive for a certain group. It's for every believer. That's presuming you are a believer. Or maybe the Lord is still waiting for you. Uh, let's wait for, you know, uh, Connie. Purpose. 
to do well. So I said, the only reason is for Jesus came. That's why he left. Huh, I made my 12. Now I'm going to 12, but make their, you know, continue the work. And that's why we're still here. Your purpose is not just to come on Sunday, to give your tithes, to give your giving, and to, to you know, uh, warm up the chairs. That's not the purpose. That's only a means to a purpose that you'll be more equipped to do the work of ministry. If, you're, if you understood what I said, say amen. amen. Okay, some did not, so that's okay. Hopefully, more will understand. That's to do a purpose of Christ. So let's move on to the next one. The soul. What's the word soul? Only, only one reason. The sole purpose of the Apostle Paul. I mean, obviously, Jesus, we cannot come here and, you know, I came here to die for your sins. We cannot do that. Only Jesus can claim that. Okay? But what Jesus said in the second one, I came to make disciples that make disciples, that is the sole purpose of Paul. So simply put, it is to follow the example of Jesus, his master, his Lord. So what example is that? Well, I already said it. To make disciples, that makes disciples. That's the only purpose of Paul. He did not come here and say, you know what? I became an apostle because I want to tour the world. I want to go to Rome. I want to go to Ephesus. I want to go to Galatia. I want to go to, you know, ride a boat. I want to go to the other side of the coin. I want to go to prison. I want to be... I, his sole purpose is to follow the example of his master. That is the sole purpose of Paul, whose name used to be Saul. But wrong spelling, okay? This one is F O L E. Now, before I give you all the text and verses and so on, let me give you the conclusion of this point. The conclusion of this point is that. That is the model for when I talk our our you and I to those who are in Christ. If you're in Christ, you know who you are. If you're not sure you're not in Christ, most likely you are not. That's the model for our life purpose. That is to be a disciple that makes disciple. You're not sure of your purpose? Here it is. By the way, you cannot make disciple if you are not a disciple. Very obvious. Or if you call a disciple, which, only, which by the way means simply a follower of Christ, I'm a disciple, but you don't know anything else. Because in your, in your mind, is disciple is I went to a class. You got it all wrong. You got it all wrong. That is the model, which means our goal is to follow the example of Paul who follow the example of Christ. Okay, let's go some verses. Okay, let's do some verses. Acts 20. I'll go Acts 20 in, in Philippians, but if there's not enough time, I'll end at Acts 20. Okay? So, Acts 20. Here's the Apostle Luke, who is the author of the book of Acts. So he gives a commentary of the life of Paul. Where in the book of Acts did Paul have his conversion? Anyone? Huh? Oh, uh, what? Did you raise your hand? No? Oh, you're saying hi? Okay, hi. <laughs> Acts chapter 9. Okay? Acts chapter 9. That is when everything else transitioned to Paul. So everything else up is about Paul. So here's what Luke said about Paul on what Paul said about himself. Here. 22. And now, in quotation, because he was quoting Paul, and now, compelled by the Spirit, I'm going to Jerusalem, not knowing what will happen to me there. I only know that in every city, the Holy Spirit warns me that prison and hardship are facing me. Next verse. However, I consider my, I consider my life worth nothing to me. My only aim is to finish the race and complete the task the Lord Jesus has given me. The task of testifying to the good news of God's grace. Now, let's go back to verse 22. Let's chop it down. 
Paul said, and now, which means there is a dividing line. Prior, this is what it is. And now, okay, so there is a shift. There's a change in chapter. There's a change in, in this particular case, geographical location. And now, because at this point, he was roaming around uh, um, um, Asia, and he was speaking the gospel there, and then he was uh, uh, planting churches. But, and now, what? Compelled by the Spirit. So at this point, the Lord is telling me, do something different from this point and now. And the Lord, His Spirit tells me to move on to a different location. And now. And now what? I am going to Jerusalem. Now, Paul originally came from Jerusalem. How many of you here are originally from the Philippines? Ah, now, if I told you I'll give you a free ticket to the Philippines, how many would you, of you will take that ticket? <laughs> and, I thought, huh? <laughs> and how many of you who are Filipinos, who are going back to the Philippines to get that ticket, will be excited to go? <laughs> yeah, of course. I like to hear that word, of course. Now, when Paul said, I'm going back to my hometown, of course. No. It's a totally different picture. He wasn't excited to go to Jerusalem. He did not plan to go to Jerusalem. He was running away from Jerusalem, except that he was compelled by the Spirit. And the word compelled did not say, and the Holy Spirit suggested that he go back to Jerusalem. By force. Compelled by force. You better go or else. Yeah, compelled. He was pushed. He was kicked. And now, do not tarry. Yeah, and now. Don't delay. Why? Why? Why does the Holy Spirit have to push him? And why is he not so excited to go back to his hometown? Because he doesn't know, not knowing what will happen to me. He was not talking about, oh no, I'm going back to Jerusalem. I don't have an itinerary. Let me see, uh, will I tour the temple first and then I will go visit the house of so-and-so and then have dinner there and then I'll go to the zip lining, you know, from uh, whatever. And I don't know what will happen to me in Jerusalem. That is not what he was saying here. You know why? Context. What is the context? The next line. Because I only know that in every city, including Jerusalem, the Holy Spirit warns me that prison and hardships are facing me. I don't know what will happen to me when I go to Jerusalem. Is it I'll be stoned? Or will I be spit on? Or will I be put in jail? Or will I be crucified like my master? I don't know. You see, he wasn't talking about which restaurants to go to. Okay? That is not what he doesn't know. He actually knows that there is hardship in prison. He does not know what kind and how intense. But the Holy Spirit is telling me to go. He's kicking my butt. What am I going to do? Obey. In his case, he obey. Many of us do not. Okay? Because we always want convenience Christianity. 24. However, who, who, who can tell us? What is the definition of however? However, Pero is but. Subalit. Subalit. Okay, however. Okay. However, even though I know that either I'll be imprisoned or hardship, you know what? However, so what? I consider my life worth nothing to me. You know, if ever I get killed in Jerusalem, so what? God pushed me here. Now, let me clarify that. When he said, I consider my life worth nothing, he's not saying my life is of no value. He's not saying my life is cheap. You can do anything with me. You know, I, I'm nobody. He was not talking about that. He was saying, I consider my life worth nothing in comparison to what the Lord wants him to do. 
The Lord wants me to go to Jerusalem. So you know what? In comparison to my life, I would rather believe him and die than to preserve my life. So it's not about I am I'm no value. You are of value. No matter how you look like. Whether you're pretty or ugly. You have value. You know why? Jesus died for you. Now how much is that? What's our topic today? Purpose. Purpose. No, no, no. It's not that I do, I do not know. I wanted to find out if you know. Yeah. Where in the verse that is say purpose? The next words. My only aim. My only purpose. My only goal. My only target. My only destination. My only priority. My only aim, my only target, my only purpose. What? What is the purpose of Paul? To keep on just preaching the word, uh, to you know always preserve his life, uh, so that if there's danger, he won't move in. Uh, is he his purpose just to be rich? Uh, is his purpose just to have a, a peaceful life? Is his purpose only just to look handsome? Uh, what is his purpose? My only aim is. Okay, by the way, my only aim, purpose, is to finish the race and complete the task the Lord Jesus has given me. So the question now is what is the race that he is talking about that he needs to finish? And what is the task of the Lord Jesus that he has to complete that was given to me? What is it? Huh. The task, the job, the work, the ministry of testifying, preaching, sharing, evangelizing. Okay, clear so far? To the goodness of God's grace. What is all of this? My only aim. Are you still wondering what your aim is? Are you still wondering? You know, what, what will I be? What will, and what's that song? Am I to be a doctor? Am I to be rich? Here's what my mother says. Que sera, sera. Whatever will be, will be. You know, that, that's the, the motto of many Christians. Bahala na si Lord. What do you mean, bahala na si Lord? He already said what he wants. Abahala na siya. You know what? That's a place safe. Anyway, pinag-pray ko na. I already prayed about it. Yeah? You know, we, we, we want to sound you know, holy. We want to sound very Christian. I, I'm praying for it. Actually, I shared it with my uh, fellow Christians to pray for it. The prayer warrior team. <laughs> I, I told them to pray for it. <laughs> Purpose is very clear. When Jesus left this world, he did not make people Christians guess. He preached it black and white. So that's Acts 20. That's what Paul said. So what are some of the lessons? Do I have time? How, what time is it? 5 to 12? Okay, so I have five minutes. And besides, Pastor Anthony is not here, so. <laughs> Erase that part, okay? <laughs> oh, Joan is here, Joan! Be on my side for this today, okay? <laughs> what are some of the lessons? First, go do the task of sharing the gospel Whatever. You see, some of us think that we are to share the gospel, and if the person receives the Lord, we are successful, and therefore God is happy. God did not call us to be successful. <gasps> what? Just share. 
Yeah, he didn't call us to be successful. He called us to be faithful. There's a difference. When we share the gospel, as long as we, 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 we share it as clear as possible, in the end, it's up to the person. But I'm being faithful to share the gospel. I don't call that a failure. Clear? Okay. Remember, Paul wasn't always quote unquote successful. The mere fact he was in prison, he's a successful. The mere fact that he was uh, you know, beaten up, human standard, he was not successful. But he was very faithful. So keep that, okay, in your mind, in your heart. You and I are called to be faithful, not necessarily successful. Because faithfulness in God's sight is true success. You heard me? Yes. Okay. Number two. Serving in the kingdom of God can be can be deadly. You, 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 a lot of Christians think, you know, if you serve the Lord, wow, it's going to be so beds of roses. <laughs> but they forgot something. It's a bed of roses with its thorns. Yeah. It's deadly. You know why many Christians don't expect hazardous ministry? Because they're not really involved in ministry. That's the reason why. Really. But we are San Diego. We are not, you know, uh, Islam country. No, no, no. You truly do the ministry in San Diego, you will expect a hard, hazardous environment. Especially in Mindanao. Not even Mindanao. I'm talking about San Diego. <laughs> right here. Forget about Mindanao. Forget about Africa. Forget about Middle East. I'm talking about San Diego. That's why in the, the, way of the, the way of the master, we're saying, go out and share the gospel. Expect rejection. Expect everything. Yeah. Our brother Dan here. Dan, I mean, you, you've been sharing the, the gospel a lot. I mean, do you always get, oh, oh, wow. Let's give him, you know, sandwich. And let's give him, he's a child of God. He's, no, 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 no. Take the sandwich away from him. He has eaten already. That's a joke. <laughs> Thank you for laughing. <laughs> Just, say, just note that, okay? Brothers and sisters, if we're going to be a disciple, making disciples, expect this. Oh, but I will lose my job. So what? That's the hazard. <laughs> yeah. At least you still have your life. Oh, but, uh, you know, I don't have the time. So what? Make time. But, I do not know how to speak. Oh, learn to speak. I don't know the verses. I'll give it to you later. Okay. <laughs> How's it do? Number three. Some of the lessons we can pick up. Uh, which I kind of gave the example already. Arrange your life around God's business. Our problem is we arrange God's business around our life. Ah. You know why you don't have time? You know why? Because you, start, you arrange your life, sorry, you arrange the God, God's business around your life. That's why you don't have time. But I'm really tired. Oh. You know why? Because you arrange God's business around your life. That's the reason why. But I don't know if I can make a disciple. You know why? Because you arrange God's business around your life. You see the purpose now? You don't just go blindly. Ah, oh, you know God's purpose is when you know, I'm really happy with what I'm doing and my job is really smooth and uh, you know, people appreciate what I'm doing. No, 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 okay? no, no. You've written them down already? You done? Yes. Memorize it already? <laughs> Up here? Okay. Then next, move it down here. Okay. The lesson for this morning is not for up here. It's for down here. Purpose. Purpose. 
Paul's sole purpose in life, in this earthly life, if I may add, is the model for every believer's life purpose. You know why? why? Why Paul is our model? You know why? Because the model of Paul is Christ. Oh, yeah. Ah, what verse is that? Did you make it up, Mike? No, 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 no. First Corinthians, Paul says, follow my example because I'm really smart, because I'm really good, because I'm really educated. Follow my example as I follow the example of Christ. You don't have to invent your purpose. You don't have to spend a lot of time finding what's my purpose. As soon as you are a Christian, just read the Bible. You'll know what your purpose is. That's why the word Christian should, must be added to whatever your title is. If you're a doctor, you're a Christian doctor, which means the only reason why you're a doctor is to be able to share the gospel as a Christian to your patient or whoever else. If you're a teacher, you're a Christian teacher, and so on and so forth. So let's go back to boxing. <laughs> Whom did you bet for? I, I, I forgot, I mean, I'm in a church. Okay. <laughs> when they went up the ring, they have a purpose. Knock him down. So, let's end with this. Paul says, I do not fight like a boxer beating the air. Brothers and sisters, hey, who said you're going to up yet? I had 15 more minutes. Right, John? Pastor Anthony is not here. No, no, just kidding. Christians, if you still don't know your purpose, you either are have not read your Bible, you are probably misinformed, or worse, disobedient. That's the worst. Oh, I know, I took that up, you know, when I was a new believer, I heard that. So what? If it's not a reality, it's not a reality. I do not fight like a boxer beating the air, says Paul. Do I have another one, or that's it? I think that's it. Actually, I have Philippians, but I think it's too much because Pastor Anthony might arrive already and we're still... <laughs> we're still <laughs> Shall we all rise, please? Shall we all rise?